Welcome to LabInsider.com. My name is Max and I'll be your host. I'll be joined by Olivier Chevalier of the University of Avignon and an 11 year veteran at the Queen's University in Belfast. Olivier will tell us about the preparation of today's graduates for the jobs of tomorrow's pharmaceutical industry. We'll be talking about automation in the lab and how to bring data to the hands of everyone in your organization, as well as the fact that automation might just be something a little bit difficult to implement in today's academic circles. Welcome, Olivia. Olivia, it's great to have you here with us. Uh, we've spoken uh, recently about, about your role and about a, a number of things that have really... Um, Something, something very passionate, actually. I think uh, automation uh, in the laboratory. But I think, I think what I'd like to make sure that our audience understands is your role uh, at this moment. Uh, at the minute, I am the manager of uh, an analytical platform in Avignon, uh, which is um, in the south of France. Uh, yeah, maybe not everybody knows that. Uh, we are a small university, but we've got quite a lot of equipment in terms of uh, mass spectrometry, microscopy, uh, phytotron as well for plant growing. Um, and we are managing all these kind of instruments and, and, um, and all this laboratory on an operational point of view. So trying to organize uh, the experiment and trying to rationalize the usage of all this equipment. So that is my main role at the minute and trying to improve it and to get the most of the equipment inside the university as well as outside to for companies who want to do a little bit of research and who want to use our facilities and our different methodology and our, what our scientists are developing in Avignon. One of the sticking points of our, of our recent conversations was uh, silos. Um, yes. Information, exactly. information being kept uh, in separate Sort of well, separate departments in some cases. I mean, we're we're, we're talking universities of uh, multiple campuses, multiple facilities, uh, information that isn't being shared. So automation, uh, as I understand it, is one of these solutions. Um, automation is one of the part of the solution because, in my opinion, you know, that data should be shared between group and thing like that, just to make science to move on not faster, but to just to move on sometimes, because there is no point for a researcher, in my opinion, to basically keep his science to himself and just publish him from time to time. And when just collaborate with other, you need to share the information. And it makes sometimes new idea to grow in other people. And it's, I don't know, I think scientists should be, scientists are open-minded. No you know, should be open-minded. And I think, you know, sharing data and um, sharing knowledge, not only at conferences and things like that, for example, where, you know, you can network and you can, you know, right. present your data and things like that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I think it's quite important. And I think automation really helps for that because as long as all the data are kind of recorded or basically shared in the same server on the same place and you can let other people access to it from a remote computer, for example, and things like that. And it's important that, you know, automation bring you something which, in my opinion, will bring you consistency as well in the result and f force you somehow to write protocol and to write for work workflow mm -hmm. which should be reproducible. So that does not mean, you know, one researcher do one experiment and somebody else, you know, six months after can take the same, you know, workflow and the same thing. If it's done on automation, it can be rep reproduced or basically improved or slightly modified or adapted for another purpose. Do you think that maybe if we were to aggregate, give all of our information and put it into a server, uh, we would be, Perhaps it would be counterproductive, maybe, to someone who who wants something in return. Yes, yes, yes. Of no, yes, of course. Yes, it, it, yes. It, I'm not sure it will be counterproductive. It will be less productive. I would say it sure. will basically, yeah. It's it will be a little bit less productive because exchange between scientists and are, is important. Is really important because, you know, to be honest, sometimes I, you know, I you know, around, you know, around a cup of coffee, you know, during the break, I talk, just talking with other researchers, we, you know, we designed some experiment and we designed some small project and basically we ended up with a bigger project, you know, just talking, you know, 
you know, informally like that. Right, right. And, but sometimes, you know, you need to, you know, in science, especially when it's art science, you need to basically to show what you have done and, you know, or what you can do and show example. And I think, you know, if you can, sh you know, sharing that way of sharing data and basically showing somebody, you know, trying to convince somebody and easy access to the data somehow is important as well. And, um, and in my opinion as, you know, auto, you know, it's not only automation, but it's sharing data in that point of view is you can add a lot of metadata to it. And um, think which, you know, for researcher, maybe it's not important to add, but for another one, it might be important. What I can extract from, from, from one experiment um, might not be what other people want to extract from an experiment. So what we're, we're talking about is really uh, widening the scope of what people, how people can benefit yep. uh, from a project. So I guess I, I, I can see, I do see the merit uh, in that. Um, well, I suppose, I mean, is this something that, uh, is, is this something that's mainstream at the moment or is this something that's still lacking in a lot of laboratories? I think somehow it's, you know, it's, I think it's getting better, but I'm not sure it's mainstream yet, to be fully honest. I can see, you know, because I, you know, I, I'm here in, in, I'm back in France here for a little bit less than a year. And I can see there is a big difference of culture between where I was before in, in other island and here. It's a little bit different. It's a, you know, people are sharing a little bit less because maybe there is less automation here as well and people are less used to it and um, it's not saying that we were far more advanced in in Belfast but somehow yes we were because we kind of you know it was an embrace a yes embrace of this yeah, technology. yeah e exactly and you know and not only you know it's we were using already laboratory and information management systems there and basically we were you know the lab was managed you know in the more efficient ways than it is here and here it's what i'm trying to put in place basically to um people to book the equipment in advance trying to see who is booking the equipment trying to have a traceability of you know of usage of equipment and uh, and not only equipment experiment as well because it's it's really useful sometimes to see that, for example, somebody is going to use one piece of equipment for a couple of days to do one one special analysis and maybe there is another researcher who wants to do something similar or you know by chance wants to do exactly the same thing so you know what why not use, use the time or the slot or the possibility to do it just after so do, you don't have to change the setup so it's faster and you know and kind of encourage discussion between people not from the same group as well obviously there are the added comforts of working from home and, and using using your own laptop and and whatever setup people people want, uh, I understand that more people have uh, have been choosing the work from home option when it comes to the second part of the procedure, the data analysis. The so people people are taking their work with them. Don't need from quite a long time to work like that because I because I, I had a chance to have a nice setup at home to work from home and thing like that. And uh, not everybody has got that chance, you know, to to have that, but. Um, it can be difficult to kind of as well to organize and to no, do not overwork because, you know, you can have the tendency as well to spend not your night, but when you are in it, you know, not realizing that, you know, you are working really late and you are working far more than what you should do. But um, work life balance. Yes, that can be a little bit difficult, but um, you know, if you are a little bit strict with yourself and, you know, it, it's manageable. It's manageable or as long as you have got support as well from your manager, you know, you know, can basically do not push you to, you know, work, you know, can trust you basically, you know, there is a little bit of trust as well. So it's a little bit of, um, I, I know in some places it can be complicated where people, you know, some manager thinks that they need to see their staff working somehow physically working you know you know to be present to things they work because they cannot trust them to work at home you know and I uh, personally i haven't you know i was lucky enough to have you know my supervisor was you know trusted all of us to, because he could see that you know after a regular meeting every week that the work was done and even sometimes a little bit more more than what he was expecting was was done so he was kind of actually encouraging us to basically 
you know, don't overwork, you know, don't feel guilty because you are at home because, you know, you just, you are doing more than what you actually, what you will produce in, in, in the lab when you are present in the lab. I mean, in theory, yeah, sure, in, in theory, you could, you, you could access and manipulate a document and re-manipulate it back to its uh, thing to, to look like some, some work has been carried out. But I suppose automation in itself sort of solves the problem, right? Because those actions are also tracked. Yes, so, exactly. So in a way, what you're really doing is, yeah, you're encouraging some detective work if indeed there is some uh, suspicion on, on the part of management. But, um, but at the end, I think, I think the problem might solve itself. I, um, I, think, uh, I think it's interesting that the fact is that people, people are obviously heading home, uh, carrying out this work. It isn't something that many people expected in sort of in, in research and scientific industries. Uh, but the fact is, uh, a proportion of work is being carried out. Do you do you have an idea as to what kind of proportion? How thirty uh, percent of, of work that can be carried out at home? I'm not going to say fifty fifty, but um, I've in some case you can get close to that. But I will say yes, a good a, a good at least a good thirty percent can be carried out at, at home at least. The importance of obviously of competition of preparation of this new generation of students and future scientists. Uh, to enter the real world, right? To to update their CV. Um, you mentioned uh, an an automated lab, a technical, a more t- uh, digitized lab is something that is good for preparation of these students. You know, the future is going to be more automatized and with more di- digitalization. We can see that at home already, just in our normal life. You know, there is plenty of thing which. You know, we've got plenty of things like Google Home, Alexa, or things like that. Which you just, you know, that really changed over the last five years, and it's getting more and more, you know, present around us. I think we need to train, you know, future scientists already what is going to be the future, so they are not, you know, so they are going not to be disappointed. They need to know the, the technical, you know, the, how to do things the old way. They need to know that, but as well, they need to already embrace the future because they will be the one who will be carry that kind of not revolution, but evolution of science. Are there situations in which the student simply cannot impress the potential employer because they don't have the necessary uh, experience? Or uh, are there situations where the student gets hired by the pharmaceutical company uh, and enters? Uh, assumes the entry level position and then begins to struggle during their employment how 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 does that how does that happen i think it's more the second case where second basically case. you know yeah i think he's going to struggle at the start and be, not deliver as much as you know what the employee, employer thought it it was going to be and i think it's it's not a problem for the employer it's a problem for the employee for the young student starting because Starting a new job can be difficult some, in some cases to adapt and to change, especially when it's your first job or your, you know, when you are just starting your career. It can be, you know, you can realize suddenly that you are, you've trained for something that you quite like, but it's not what you're expecting, you know, and it's, you know, it can be difficult on a, you know, on on a life po- point of view somehow as well, not only on a you know, personal life, not only on a professional point of view. So it, uh, I think it's, it, it's going to, you know, if somebody knows a little bit about all of that, it's, it's going to get to be more prepared. I'm not going to say he's not going to struggle a little bit, but he's going, you know, the struggle will be a little bit less. Right, the learning curve will be a little bit yes, easier. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will be faster and, uh, and you know, and with a little bit, a bit of chance, the, the, you know, for example, the new employee can progress faster as well. And, you know, and that, that will help. That, that will, I think that is definitely something which will help, this, you know, the new employee and, the, you know, the young students and the st- people starting in a, in a company. When it comes to really, when it comes to automation, I mean, do you uh, do you think that that's something that's not happening in the UK now, or is this something? Uh, will they be less hesitant? It's not going to pass because things are not going to you know to change that much. But you know, people are going to find alternative and w- work around it somehow. I think uh, I, I'm hoping at least that's something that I'm really hoping. That was Olivier Chevalier uh, joining us on Lab Insider. Join us for more on our next episodes.